All right, I want to talk to you guys a few minutes about what we I call shank factors. And um, how many of you guys have been out practicing and maybe you're hitting the ball pretty good or hitting it, uh, hitting it decent, and all of a sudden you shank a ball and you have no idea why? Or you may go out there and, you know, I get this comment all the time, you know, a student will come to me and he may pull one, hit one good, pull one, and then he'll shank one. He'll say, man, I'm doing 10 different things wrong in my swing. And, or he'll say, I, don't, I can't figure it out. Well, I want to talk to you guys for a couple minutes about what causes a shank. And, you know, that the, the, the dreaded shank word, you know, we call it the hosel or the hosel rocket or the shank. We hate saying that word, but when it happens, we want to know how to fix it right away, especially when you're out there in a golf course. I mean, I think every golfer and any even professionals have gone out there and they, they, they're playing around and they may even playing good, all of a sudden they hit a shank and like, what just happened? And they, a lot of them panic. And so if you understand the factors behind the shank, you can usually fix them pretty quick, okay? So let's talk about, first of all, what a shank is. A shank is a shot that you're hitting, and when you hit the golf ball, it's gonna hit off the hosel of the club. So mo obviously a good golf shot's gonna hit the center of the club. Okay, you want the close to the center as possible, the better the shot, okay? Now, a shank is a shot that it hits off the hosel and then will shank off to the side or at an angle. So it goes to the right for a righty or left for a lefty, okay? So it's basically, that's why they'll call them hosel rockets or hosels or, you know, or also shanks because you're hitting the hosel of the club, okay? So now, what happens with the shank and what it is is that there's a, only a few factors that create shank shots, okay? We call them shank type shots. When, and let's talk about first of all what a good golf shot is and what's happening in a decent golf shot and then relate it to the shank, okay? So when you're hitting a golf shot, you're coming down, you're dropping the trail shoulder down, or we call it the trail shoulder under, which gets the club back to impact, which then goes through impact and, and towards the target. Now, we teach a single plane setup or a single plane swing. So naturally, getting that distance to the golf ball allows that trail shoulder to drop under, which allows the elbow to get in front of that hip, okay? So when you talk in conventional golf or traditional golf, most of those golfers get really close to the golf ball. They limit the room. It gives them, it has a much more difficult time getting that trail shoulder under, okay, and down to the golf ball, okay? Well, so first things first, when we're talking about a shank and so on is, we've got to create distance to the golf ball, okay? So, the very first thing when we talk about factors that create shanks is distance to the golf ball. Do you have enough distance? So I'm gonna give a down the line view here, and probably the best for me is to give a down the line view in most of these. So, because here's what happens. As we get up over a shot, okay, just a normal golf shot, we take the club back, we have enough spatial distance to this golf ball that allows us to drop the trail shoulder under, which allows the trail elbow to get in front of the trail hip. So I'm gonna say it one more time. We have enough distance to the golf ball that the trail shoulder goes under, okay, drops down. The elbow goes outside, goes across the trail hip, okay? We have enough room now, the club goes, the ball goes in the middle of the club. Well, if you get too close to the golf ball, what happens is, as we're trying to drop this trail shoulder under, there's not enough room. As I'm trying to get the elbow in front of my body, it's being pushed out. As this club gets pushed out, it gets pushed, pushed towards the hosel of the club. So shank factor number one, distance to the golf ball, okay? Be careful and make sure you're maintaining the correct or enough distance to the golf ball. In fact, if you shank a golf ball in a golf course, the first thing I would do is the next time I get over it, I'd get a little bit further away than normal, just to make sure, just a little bit, just to make sure you're not creeping up on the golf ball, okay? So that's number one. Shank factor number one is make sure you have enough distance that allows the elbow to cross the body or get ahead of that trail hip. Here's number two, and we just talked about with the trail shoulder. The issue with the normal golf swing, or it could be a chip or a pitch, or anytime you're, you're going after a golf ball, is when you go to make impact with that golf ball, the shoulder drops down, the trail shoulder drops down, the hands go through the shot, okay? So I'm gonna do this slow motion for you. So and if you can kind of mark this spot, you kind of see where this spot is, I'm gonna go top up here, now I'm gonna drop down, the shoulder goes to that spot or slightly inside that spot, which will then allow you to hit the middle of the club face. Well, if you go to the top of your swing or the back the, in your back swing, and your shoulder gets in your downswing, you throw your shoulder out. So instead of dropping it under, you throw the shoulder out. Now the club is going to come across the shot. Okay, so the club is going out. Well, as the club goes out, it's getting pushed away from you. Okay, so I'm going to say it again. If I start the downswing and the shoulder gets pushed out. 
Now the club is getting pushed away from me. Now I'm losing distance to that golf ball. Because as that club gets pushed away from me, the ball is getting pushed towards the hosel of the club. Okay, so shank factor number two, which is semi-related to the shank factor number one is, we've got to get the trail shoulder dropping down, not being pushed out. And you see this a lot with guys when they're pitching and chipping, and shank a ball and chipping and pitching. Because they'll get a little closer to the golf ball, they may choke down the club, and that's okay. I mean, they've got enough distance to still get the elbow you know, across the body or in front of the hip. But what happens is, they'll take the club back and they'll start throwing the shoulder out They'll start going across here. They'll start throwing the shoulder out, which will cause the club to get pushed away, which will go towards the hosel, okay? So that's shank factor number two. Shank factor in the last one, shank factor number three, and this is all related, is when a golfer, notice when I take this club back. As I'm taking this club back, I'm turning my hips and shoulders to get the club. It looks like that club shaft is going inside. Well, actually, the club shaft is following my shoulders. Okay, so it looks like the head and the shaft are going inside, but in theory, it's following my shoulders, and now it allows me to drop the shoulder under and go to impact. Well, you'll see a lot of golfers, when they take the club back, they go outside the plane. They will take the club outside. Well, as they're taking this club outside, it's not getting the trail shoulder in a proper position. So basically, notice, if I take this club in, look where my shoulder went. My shoulder is going, is going in and up for the golf swing. If I take this club out, now my shoulder is too far out in the backswing, so I can either try to manipulate it and loop it coming down, which most golfers don't, we don't really preach that, or I may come from the outside across. Well, here's the problem. If I'm outside already because my shoulder's too far out in the backswing, as I come down, the shoulder's being pushed out. As that shoulder's being pushed out, just like we discussed, it's pushing the club away from you, which can hit towards the hosel or shank the club, okay? So if you notice, there's kind of an underlying theme here. You know what I'm saying? So number one, and again, I'm gonna review these really quick. And again, this is for the, you know, very seldom do I get a student or somebody comes in and says, I'm shaking every single shot. It can happen. I mean, we've all, sometimes we've gone through it, but typically what happens is they'll hit some shots, they may pull one, they may hit a good one, they may pull one, and all of a sudden they shank one. And, and it kind of really freaks them out, what's going on? And, and they want, they you know, what, why did it just, all of a sudden it just happen? I mean, I was hitting good shots and all of a sudden it happened. Well, here's what they typically, if you really examine it or you film it, here's what's happening. They're hitting towards the inside of the club, so they're getting close to a shank, but it's not hitting the hosel, so it looks like a decent shot or it might be a slight pull. The reason it's a slight pull is because if you hit towards the inside of the heel, most time the toe of the club will turn over. So that's what you normally see when people are leading up to a shank, because you'll see maybe a decent shot, maybe a slight pull, maybe a decent shot, then it turns into a shank because it's working in towards that hosel, okay? And again, let's review this really quick. The main issues, the main factors behind shanking the golf ball are, is all about this trail shoulder, which is allow, which working that trail shoulder properly, because working that trail shoulder properly allows this elbow to get in front of the hip. Okay, so let's go this one more time. Number one, get more distance to the golf ball. Just getting more distance to the golf ball will help you allow that elbow to get across that hip or across that body. Because guys, again, in a good chip, pitch, or full swing, that elbow's going across the body going into impact, okay, with that shoulder, trail shoulder dropping. That's number one. Let's just get some good, good distance, okay? Number two is we've got to work on getting this trail elbow dropping down in the swing, not over dropping down. So as I take a back swing, again, it could be in a long chip, it could be in a pitch, it could be in a full swing. As I go down to impact, I've got to get the shoulder going down and under, allowing the elbow to go across the front of the body, going back to impact. If the shoulder at the top of the swing gets thrown out, so or I'm going over the shot, as it's going out, the club's being pushed away from me and I'm losing my distance. As that club's being pushed away from me, it's being pushed, the ball's being pushed towards the hosel, okay? So that's shank factor number two. Shank factor number three that we, is very commonly seen is when I take this club back, this club follows my shoulders as I turn and stays on plane. Now I can go and drop the shoulder down in the elbow in front of the hip like I want to. If the club goes too far outside or it goes outside in the backswing, now I have to get this shoulder somehow. I've got to basically, you hear it called rerouting the club. I somehow have to this club rerouted to allow the shoulder to drop under. Too many times you see people bring the club outside and then they drag the shoulder across, okay, and 
Losing that distance to the golf ball creates the shank or the heel hit, okay? So again, those are the main factors you look at when you see a shank occur or a shank's about to happen or you just ha had what happened in the golf course. Knowing those factors can help you, number one, as you're practicing, make sure that you're not going to shank golf balls you're hitting the middle of the club face. But here's the second thing. And this is the big thing. We panic. We get in the golf course. We go out and we play around the golf. We're hitting it decent. We're playing okay. And all of a sudden we shank a ball. And a lot of people, we call it the wheels coming off. The wheels come off because they kind of panic. If you know those shank factors, you know what created them, you can take a couple of practice swings. You can work into those correct positions even while you're out in the golf course playing that will help you prevent from shanking it again. Okay? So again, Knowing those factors, understanding how those work will help you eliminate those shanks, which always scares us. will give you a lot more accuracy, a lot more consistency, and make this game a whole lot more fun.